Hello, my name is Igor and welcome to my first creep test with silicon printing plastic materials. Few words, what is the material creep? It is also called like uh, cold flow. Imagine you have some object and put some very small load on it and it deforms just a little bit. Now if that uh, load is below the yield stress, in that case uh, if you remove that load it will get the original shape. Now if you uh, put back that load and leave it there permanently, uh, in that case the object may permanently deform additionally and uh, that is why it is important to understand this uh, creep test with these 3D printing plastic materials. Uh, because imagine you have some mechanical part and uh, it will have some permanent load on it. And you put it together and it works fine. But uh, you want to uh, that functional part works after a few weeks or months later. And that it is important to understand what material to choose in that case for that mechanical object. This is my first uh, creep test I mentioned, so I want to compare four completely different materials, but from I try to collect them from the same brand. So what I have here is the Prusa PLA, then the Prusa PTG. This material is used for my CD printed parts or Prusa Marsui S printer. Prusa ASA. And nylon, but this is from the game beard, it is in blue color. Don't worry, there will be ABS too. Uh, but first, I want to compare these four materials to see. I hope it, there will be visible significant difference. And uh, in one of my future videos, I will compare four different ABS materials because uh, I want to see uh, what material is best uh, for my. Uh, Voron CD printed parts because yes, I am building a Voron 2 in very near future. And uh, now let's see, talk about the tests. I'm familiar with, with two standard uh, creep tests. One is the uh, tensile creep test, and uh, you have to put the, the test specimens on one side, they put some load on the other side, and measure the deformation with some dial indicator or something like that. Uh, but I want to have a comparison test usually. The creep test will uh, last uh, at least one week in, in, in this video at least. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, if the circumstances, the temperature, the environment, uh, I don't know, humidity or something like that will be constant. So that's why uh, I want to have this comparison test. So that's why I don't use this test. The next test I'm familiar with is a strip point bending test. And you already saw that in my earlier videos, but uh, there I use just uh, paste the load only once until it doesn't break. But uh, in this test you put the load and you should measure again with the dial indicator the deformation after some uh, longer period of time. So that's uh, why I'm not using that one. So what will I use? Well, I prepared three different uh, creep tests and I, I was experimenting with different shapes. So these are just uh, test objects. And what I have here... First one will be some kind of combination of the tensile and the bending. So I have these test specimens here and I will uh, place a load... Ah, it's here. Well, I have four pieces of this uh, one 0.25 uh, kilogram weight uh, loads. So I put this load on them and uh, I will follow the deformation. I will measure with the uh, micrometer the deformation of this object. And I will measure between these two parts the distance. And of course for this I prepared <laughs> an apparatus so I can place here uh, four four test specimens at the time. So that's the first test. The second test will be the some kind of bending. And I have these test specimens here. All test specimens you can find on my website. Uh, you can download the STL files, but maybe I will place a drawing too if somebody uh, wants to redraw them. And I will place them here in this apparatus. All extrusions, nothing special, and uh, I will place them here. 
So they are, uh, I think, 10 uh, centimeters long, but two centimeters will be in this support. And uh, I will place a load. It, this is uh, M24 screw nut. And I will follow the deformation by time. I will, uh, measure, of course, check the start deformation and maybe after three or four days or something like that. So this is the second uh, creep test I will have with these four different materials. And the third one is actually the torque test. I have this test specimen. It's actually, uh, this is the simulating of the uh, screws in, in Voron parts, for example. And actually, I get the idea from the Stefan from CNC Kitchen. I'm not sure if this is some kind of standard, but uh, yes, it's, the idea is great and it is very simple to uh, to do this test. So what I, I will uh, place here uh, a washer, a standard washer, uh, an M5 uh, bolt. The washer is very important, uh, the diameter, so it is 10 millimeter outer diameter of this washer. And uh, there will be a washer and a screw nut from the other side. I will place them in a vase, that's why I need two, because only the nut will be in the vase. And I will tighten it with this uh, torque wrench until it skips, it clicks. This torque wrench I presented in one of my previous videos. The, the scale is not really calibrated, not uh, accurate, but the repeat repeatability is great. So I check compared with my torque meter, and uh, repeatability is uh, below 0.1 newton meter. So in that case, it is accurate. So I will set to, I don't know, maybe 2.5 newton meters and I will not uh, touch it, I will not change the settings. So uh, it should be accurate. This means I will tighten it and then uh, I place, printed some caps for these uh, bolts. And uh, when I tighten it again, because uh, this is the Allen key, it doesn't touch this plastic part. Uh, I can uh, twist it and uh, see if there will be any movement. I will see, maybe I will check after every two days or something like that. So uh, these are only my ideas for this first test. I will see the results and um, maybe there will be my standard uh, creep uh, testing methods. Let's prepare the objects. Now let's measure the start values. Here I understood that this will not work because when I try to measure I uh, always compress a little bit this object. So I had to find some different solution. I wasn't too happy with the accuracy of the readings so uh, I prepared this uh, part and with this I can lock the position during the measuring because always when I press this uh, they deform a little bit so I get in inaccurate measuring. And this method seems to uh, work because now you can see without this uh, holder. And this is with the holder, you can see side by side these two pictures. And I will remove it now. Fourteen point seventy nine. ATG 17 ESA 16.36 25.51 For the next script test I will insert this test specimen. Uh, the thickness is 2.4 millimeters and as I mentioned, the load will be this M24 screw nut.
I think I have to print some kind of support for this but uh, now I'll measure it by holding in my hand PLA 35.5 millimeters PTG mm, 32 millimeters ASA 32 millimeters and nylon is bending a lot 22 millimeters we will see in few days if there will be any changes and for the last test, uh, these test specimens are printed as suggested for the uh, Voron pseudo printer parts. So they are printed with five top and bottom uh, layers, uh, four walls, and 40% uh, infill. And I'm using a M5 bolt with a regular 10 millimeter washer. And same washer and the nut from the other side. I will prepare them inside, but then uh, later I will tie them in the vise. And when I tie them, later I can check the movement. I have this cap, and they go only on the top part of this bolt. And I have this scale. And I can measure the angle when I tight the bolt after a few days if there will be any movement or not. I will place the parts into the vise and uh, they will hold only the nuts. torque wrench is uh, set to exactly 2.5 Nm. The scale is not accurate but I measure it and the repeatability is good. Simple as that. Only 10 hours passed. I will not do some newer measurements, only visually analyzing the changes. And I can see this one is all, almost fall down. So just a little bit more. And I think in the morning uh, this nut will not be on these test specimens. Uh, visually, I cannot see any changes on the PLA, PETG, and ASA. So if it falls down, then this nylon will be excluded from the further experiments in this test. I can see visually some changes on this test specimens too. Well, uh, for the first look, uh, the PLA is the strongest, uh, but when I started with experiments, uh, PTG and ASA uh, were equal, but now I can see a little bit more deformations on uh, PTG, which I'm not happy about because my uh, printed parts on Prusa Mark CS are from exactly this material, so it looks like it would be better if they are from ASA. And uh, well, definitely the nylon is not good in this kind of uh, testing. Um, don't forget the PLA looks uh, very strong so far, but it's only the room temperature now. And I believe that it will fail if I raise the temperature and there will be after maybe three days, I will place it in enclosure simulating maybe 40, 45 degrees Celsius. And I believe that this one will fail there. It's morning now, so approximately after 24 hours, the deformation of the nylon was so big that uh, the nut uh, fell down. And uh, I know that nylon is uh, elastic, but it is very interesting that uh, it uh, came back to original shape. It's completely straight. I cannot see any visual deformation. And visually, there is no other changes on uh, these specimens after 24 hours. Day 2, visually no changes, but let's uh, measure the dimensions. Fifteen point ninety five PTG eighteen point twenty ASA sixteen point eighty seven 
and nylon 33.57 and now this two point bending test PLA 34 millimeters PTG 31 and a half millimeters And ABS 31 and a half. And the nail on it uh, failed, but as I mentioned, it already got its uh, original position. Hmm. And now let's check if uh, using the same torque I can uh, tighten more these uh, bolts in these uh, plastic parts. I will start with PLA. Sixty fifty degrees from this PTG. ASA. Nylon more than 90 degrees. Actually, I can think of this uh, scale now because uh, I will always uh, start with the reset values. And uh, so, this was the second day, and I will repeat this test on the fourth day. And uh, probably there will be no big differences because visually I cannot see any difference between first and second day. And after fourth day, uh, maybe on fifth day, I will place the test specimens in enclosure, simulating uh, temperatures inside, maybe 40 or 45 degrees Celsius, and uh, measure everything on the sixth day. And maybe I will stop the experiment here, or maybe there will be repeated tests on eighth day. We will see. It is day four. Visually, it is hard to see any changes on the test specimens, so I will measure them now and then place them in the heated enclosure and after that uh, measure again. PLA 34, PTG 31, ESA 31.5, and the nylon already failed earlier. PLA 16.30 PTG 18.60 ASA 17.24 and the nylon 37.32 and now the torque test and again starting with the PLA in video I will show you only uh, one measuring, but uh, here you can see the results for both. PTG. ASA Nylon
Uh, this is my setup inside this Creality enclosure. So these are my test specimens and I place inside my two strongest filament dryers. So this is the iBoss and this is the Creality. I le we left them open and also the heating type will also be included in this simulating. Uh, like, I don't know, you will use some 3D printed parts inside the enclosure during the printing. I'm not sure if it's visible, approximately there is my temperature sensor and uh, after 5 minutes it's already 38 degrees Celsius inside. My goal is to go up to 45 degrees Celsius. Only half hours later I can see it is 45 degrees Celsius and uh, visually I can see that the formation on the PLE is already bigger than on ASA. But uh, I will let it inside one and a half hours more and then I will measure the test specimens. Well, here I cannot see clearly the difference here and of course uh, I will measure later these uh, torque specimens. After one and a half hours <laughs> I can see the PLA will almost completely fail. And uh, it looks like the temperature is around 45-46 degrees Celsius stabilized. And I'll try to measure uh, the temperature down there, because uh, there I cannot see this kind of deformations on the PLA. Because as you can see the test probe is now in the level of the, these test specimens here. So here the temperature was 45-46 degrees Celsius and now down there on the lower test specimens the temperature is uh, 40 degrees Celsius. Because there I cannot see this kind of deformations on PLA. And I also move these torque test specimens higher to get a higher temperature on them. The timer turned off, so two hours pass, and now let's see the result. <laughs> these test specimens were exposed to 45-46 degrees Celsius, almost two hours. And those down are approximately 40 degrees Celsius. And here, well, actually, I'm not sure, but I think it was uh, close to 45. We will see with the measuring. I will take them out for more comfortable measuring. PLA. 31.40. PTG. 20.22. ASA 17.63 and nylon 45.31 and let's measure these uh, bending test specimens and don't forget they were, they were exposed only to 40 degrees Celsius PLA 32 PTG 30 ESA 31.5, no changes. And of course the torque test. Wow, these, these bots are completely loose. This is PETG. ASA Nylon Results after day 4 And this is day six, uh, only afternoon because now I arrived from my workplace. And uh, I will measure these test specimens, uh, analyze the results, and then make a conclusions. PLA 31.5. PTG, it's 30 exactly. 
and ESC thirty one point five. I think these two are without changes. PLA thirty two point forty one. PTG. 20.67 ASA 17.69 and nylon 45.67 and finally the screw test I'm starting with PLA it's a little bit windy maybe I have to replace the voice I will see later and in the video you, I will show you only the second measuring ATG ASA And before I show you the results, I want to take off these loads and create some time lapse, maybe one hour, to see uh, will they get back their original shape. This is one hour time lapse. And now, four hours later, I want to measure the permanent deformation. PLA 2879, PTG 1469, 13.33, nylon 2677. And this is how it looks like without load. And now let's analyze the results. For those who are watching from mobile, uh, there is a link you can download the picture and you can zoom in to see better the numbers. And uh, this first uh, table and graph is uh, that uh, C test specimen bending from day 0 to day 6 and with the red is the day 4 after the heating in 2 hours inside the enclosure and the smaller value is better so the perfect is 12 millimeters distance between those two uh, surfaces and here uh, I added the information but it's not included in graph uh, the dimension after I removed the load at the end of day 6 and I waited 4 hours and uh, so this is some kind of permanent deformation and in this graph we can see that the nylon has the biggest deformation here, very interesting. Um, the ASA, the smallest deformations, even hardly noticeable after this heating. PTG, a little bit bigger deformations compared to the ASA, but, but uh, not big difference. But PLA, uh, you can see this uh, big creeping after it was exposed uh, only 2 hours to 45-46 degrees Celsius. This is 2 point bending test. Uh, and uh, here actually it is not so visually the de this dif uh, difference uh, but don't forget here the temperature down in the enclosure was only 40 degrees Celsius and but the nylon failed after the first day actually the, that uh, screw nut fall down from the test specimen and this is that uh, torque test uh, of 2.5 newton meters was the testing torque and actually this is always zero, so value from the zero. Um, I'm not sure how useful is this information. I think from this graph, uh, this is the most interesting and most useful information with this C test specimen bending. Another conclusions, but first about the materials. Uh, no big surprises for me, uh, only I wasn't sure about the difference. Uh, I know that uh, PL is quite strong but only on the room temperature. If you raise the temperature a little bit, then it's done. So think twice before you print, I know, a fan shrouds on your industry or something like that. About the nylon, um, it is better in different kind of tests. For example, it is elastic and it would perform good on impact test. I was surprised a little bit that uh, 
uh, it's some cre it had some creeping after that uh, thermal heating because uh, nylon should be more thermal resistant. And about the PTG and the ESA. ASC yes, very similar to ABS, uh, very similar, of course the ASC is uh, better, but uh, the difference is not so big and uh, it is a little bit harder for printing, so you need uh, to print it in a closure and you need to use some glue stick for better adhesion to, to prevent a warping and a similar. Uh, so definitely it will be a very important test. Uh, when I want to test four different ABS materials uh, to find out which is best for Voron CD printed parts. Uh, proper, it looks like that uh, Prusa parts, they are printed from PETG, uh, but maybe it will be better to reprint them from the ASA. Few words about the crypt tests. Uh, what is your opinion? Which of these three is the most useful? Uh, my personal opinion, I don't really like this two point bending test. It is not really accurate, this reading with the ruler. Maybe I should rebuild this with some kind of a three point bending test, which is a standard. Only I have to solve the problem how to read this with dial indicators, and I have to place some bigger weight in that case. And I have to keep this mobile and compact to place it inside the enclosure, for example. Now, about this uh, screw test, uh, really small and compact and very simple. Uh, it uh, really simulates the real usage of the printing part, which will be screw somewhere within these metallic boards. Mm, but watching the results, I think the more useful is uh, this test with the C test specimens. The only thing I didn't like here is that uh, reading. Not so comfortable. Uh, it would be better if maybe I could rebuild this to similar like those uh, tensile test machines uh, to have some lever and uh, with the dial indicator read the deformations, but I don't have four, another four dial indicators. And uh, Banggood uh, is a little bit disappointed. All my tour review videos didn't exceed 1000 views and completely understand them. Um, but hey, I have a Patreon support, so these guys are fantastic. And uh, maybe I will use one month Patreon donation to buy four or maybe eight uh, dial indicators and rebuild this machine. Only I have to solve it to keep this uh, compact and small because, as I mentioned, I have to. Uh, move it sometimes in the enclosure. This as it is now uh, could fit in our oven. <laughs> Only problem is that I have to wait my wife to go from home because she's not uh, she's without job uh, currently and um, I could simulate there even 100 degrees Celsius if I want to and if it is a little bit bigger I'm not sure if it can fit inside. So uh, I'm open for suggestions. Uh, any idea is welcome. I always get very nice ideas from you guys. Uh, so Thank you for watching and happy printing!